exactly three weeks since we started this um, layer on this Benjamina ficus, and it is time to get it out of here um, and separate it. The cup is extremely full of roots, and I had absolutely no intentions of creating um, aerial roots on this on this tree, but this tree is offering up so many aerial roots right now that I think when we put it into its, um, we're going to go into just a rectangular um, training pot that's going to allow us to pull some of these branches down with guy wires, that I think we need to optimize what this tree is offering us. It's starting to bud out more root buds even above these aerial roots that it's already starting to put out. So that's what we're going to do. And if we don't like the aerial roots later, we can always take them off. Um, but like I said, since this tree is actually already offering it to us, then let's go ahead and see what develops. So let's get this cup off. So the cup is off and we can see the aerial roots growing up along the trunk line and the buds coming out for more roots as we climb up and that this cup is extremely full. Um, I'm going to use my tweezers just to pick out some of the sphagnum so I'm going to jump over into fast mode. Um, now I would not recommend that you do this with some other layers that you do that you sh should just pot that entire root ball kind of up with the sphagnum and let it establish before doing that. Um, but I'm going to with this tree just because it has put out so many roots actually above even where our layer space is. So let's go in and do it. So I found where our actual layer spot is. And so I'm going to go ahead in here and just disconnect it. I'm gonna try not to damage some of those root buds up here. So here's our stump that's left. And we'll keep cleaning that off. The sun is just a just a stream in it. I'll set my tree to the side here. Maybe. Yeah, there's a we have roots below the right just at the bottom of where that cut base was too. But so I think I want to cut these roots off where this base layer was and I guess we'll see if anything wants to grow here you want a stump you can see when we look in the tree in here then how this was like when we put the air layer on, we talked about how that tree was formed and why we had to crack that base a little, that it was two trees that were whapped, whapped together, but where that base twist went, it gave that illusion then of that inverse taper. So that's why we chose to then move our base up higher, but we can clearly see then the two trees here at the top. But let's move that stump to the side and we'll maybe work it later. But let's get in and 
Now we can get more sphagnum out in the bottom and see where this is all coming from. All right. So this is the root plane now that we're going to um, be building from. I had to go in and I just took out some of these side roots that had already adhered all together growing up that cup. But we have so many roots that I, this isn't going to be an issue. Um, and we could develop this as a little separate side tree over here if we're not going to use it as a sacrifice branch type towards the base. We'll keep this one here though, but we'll get more into talking about the styling and bringing some of these branches down and then resetting it up to nurture and develop some of those aerial roots then. Um, but let's go ahead and get this into a pot now. All right, so we're just going to go in with a mixture of what I call the discard soil because um, it's a Benjamina and it's tropical. It's a mixture of APL and organic peat. I did place a rock under this to maintain that kind of um, wide root plane. And we're going to go on in. I also set some bamboo chopsticks and wired them in to use as guide wire holders. So let's get the baby buried. All right, so we have the little Benjamina in a in its training pot. We'll take a look at it higher up uh, once we're done, but I do want to start out by pulling some of these branches down before we kind of set it up with some um, bumper sides to help promote further, you know, these aerial roots that are throwing out here lower. pulled down to where I want them. Later in the season, we're going to cut these back a little bit. Um, but now I just want to build some channel walls kind of like right underneath these lower branches to help get some of that aerial roots to continue to grow then. So I'm now just getting some channel walls built in at the lower base to help um, just kind of hold some of that humidity in. And then we're just going to put a little sphagnum around the walls and the base kind of here. We don't want it packed maybe up to the trunk because these were throwing off very nicely without the sphagnum actually having contact with it. And as you saw what a Benjamina can do, in a bunch of sphagnum is create a super messy root mass. Um, and we want these to be coming out nice and linear and kind of dropping naturally. So we'll see how it goes. So this looks super rigged up and bougie or something. Uh, all right, so now I'm just going to go in with some sphagnum moss. I'm not packing it around the trunk. I'm creating almost just like a circular square, a circular square, a rectangular um, box inside these walls. The walls are just to hold it so they don't want to like, it doesn't want to fall down, but I'm going to need to get me some more sphagnum for this then. So I'll be back. So now I'm just going to go in with this sphagnum moss that I've prepared and I'm just going to build a wall of the sphagnum around the tree, not touching the tree, just to maintain extra humidity and promote these, you know, these aerial roots from wanting to form. And then we're going to be um, misting this tree frequently.
around this area. And these are just cardboard cut pieces. Obviously that doesn't have a very long life, but it was only three weeks and it had put out all of those roots around the sphagnum. So I don't know that we're gonna need anything longevity wise. But if we do need to change it out, then obviously we always have that option. We would just have to pull it. Um, what works well for this, if you need something longevity wise is go to like a Dollar General or even probably a Walmart, but the plastic sheet cutting boards, um, they're very easy to cut through and they're then plastic. So they kind of maintain Look at that pretty little sphagnum bed around the tree. And it's being built up. Um, you know, probably two or three inches around it here as far as height wise, because we want it to get fairly close to these, this lower trunk here. We'll see what comes out here. We'll just see. Like I said, this wasn't in the plan for this tree, but if it's offering it up right now, then you know, why not just go with it? See what happens. I'll take some of this older sphagnum from earlier. All right. I think that's good. It's gonna go back to that tropical tent where it's very humid. And we'll just see what happens, but let's go ahead and take a big look at our tree next after I get it watered. And if you're concerned about that little stump left behind, I'm going to um, repot that and we'll just see what happens to it. If it gives us some more branches and another tree, then we will pass that on to someone that may want it.